Hello everyone, welcome back to Manatee Local. It is mid-June and the qualification period has closed. We now know who's going to be on the ballot in August and in November. We now have all the candidates that have qualified for the elections and some people will be on the ballot. Some people will not be on the ballot because they did not qualify and some people will not be on the ballot because they qualified and there was no other qualified opposition, which I guess is a good thing. But in a democracy, you would think that there would be at least some kind of robust contest. You know, but anyway, so it is what it is. So we've got some folks that are not going to be on the ballot. So let's take a look at this. I've got uh, the Bradenton Journal open. It's a good little summary of what's going on in our local races. I'm not really going to talk too much about the federal stuff, but here we go. Okay, so the people that have fortunately gotten off of the ballot for good reasons, meaning that they had no qualified opposition, were the Clerk of Court and Comptroller Angel Colonesso, Sheriff Rick Wells, and Tax Collector Ken Burton Jr. So, yay for them. They got it. Now, the primaries are in August. They didn't have any primary. They didn't have any challengers at all. So, they are deemed re-elected. So, they're not even going to show up on the ballot because they don't have to be. Anyway. All right, there's a poll here. Most people are concerned about the election supervisor race between James Satcher and Scott Farrington. And the tilt of this, of this publication is going to be towards Farrington. And honestly, that's my choice too. But anyway, here we go. So here's who qualified in all the major races in Manatee County. We've got, ooh, let me make this a little bit bigger so it's easier to read. Okay, there we go. All right. For the County Commission, District 1, we have Glenn Pearson for the Democrats. And then we have a primary, Carol Feltz, Steve Metallo in the Republican Party. And in November, Jen Hamey, who filed as no party affiliation, she will be on the ballot in November. And so will Glenn. So the, uh, the winner of the Republican primary between Carol Feltz and Steve Metallo will go on to face Jen Hamey and Glenn Pearson in November. We want to get the grassroots candidate here, and that is Carol Feltz. You know, you like more traffic and more sewage bubbling up in, in our water and not being able to swim in the water because of all the bacteria. And that's the lingbia that's been growing because we've got way too much pollution and runoff. Yeah, well, and no wetlands either. Yeah, then if you want, if you like all that stuff, then you vote for Steve Metallo. But if you actually want fiscal responsibility and, and, and a conservation of the environment, you vote Carol Feltz. Keith Green, who was a Republican, he'd previously filed, he actually filed to run against George Cruz and then decided that he would switch to District 1 after James Satcher dropped out and just then got the appointment to, to the supervisor election, he did not qualify for the ballot. If you look at the supervisor of elections website, yeah, he didn't even really raise any money after like the first reporting period. I didn't see any changes in his donations. So this is not a surprise. Sorry, Keith Green fans, but he's not going to be on the ballot at all in no August or November. Then we go to District 3. Now, District 3 was a hot race because at first, Kevin Van Austin Bridge was running for re-election re in its own district. Then he decided to switch out and switched with April Culbreth uh, and so that he could run against George Cruz in the at-large race in District 7. So now April Culbreth is in as the Republican uh, versus Tal Sadiq in the Republican primary. Diana Shoemaker is a Democrat and she qualified. And Jeffrey Gray is a write-in. I guess he's trying to make sure that Diana doesn't drop out. And there's a story there with these with these write-ins. These are just people that insist on closing a primary. But you know what's really harebrained about this thing with Jeffrey Gray and a couple others here that were obviously trolling the, the election system and our sham candidates is that 
the presence of a Democrat in the race and one that qualifies means that you don't have to actually have a write-in because the Democrat closes the Republican primary. I mean, this is such a stupid harebrained stunt. It's like, it, it's ridiculous. I mean, Diana Shoemaker had already qualified by petition. You know, she was in, she was going to be on the ballot in November because there is no Democratic primary in District 3. But hey, somebody who hates democracy decided that they would still file as a write-in candidate to ostensibly close the already closed Republican primary. Pay attention, people. Learn how this stuff works. Don't make yourself look like an idiot. All right. So then we move on to District 5 out east. This is Lakewood Ranch, parts of Tara, and around that area, close to 75. Dr. Robert McCann, as a Republican, is going against Ray Turner, the incumbent who was appointed, not elected, appointed to replace Vanessa Baugh and Joe DeBartolomeo. Joe is going to appear on the ballot in November as the NPA. He will face the winner of the Republican primary, Dr. McCann, hopefully, and hopefully we won't have to see Ray Turner in November, but a, a fair fight between Dr. McCann and Joe would be totally swell. District 7, the at-large race. This is the race that's hot because Kevin Van Austinbridge comes in swinging with his quarter of a million dollars almost uh, war chest. There are already smear ads going out about George Cruz. Yeah, so this race is the hot one. In this race, we have Sari Lindros Valimaki, our Democratic uh, candidate. She was facing Aaliyah Hurt. Uh, but then Aaliyah Hurt dropped out without qualifying, and I think that's probably a good thing. I didn't see the point to it. The race was already f quite full, and what was the point of Democratic primary? I don't know. Anyway, uh, George Cruz, the incumbent, Kevin Van Ostenbridge are going against each other. This is like the first time in almost in like around 20 years, apparently, that two sitting members on the board are going to face off against each other. It just hasn't been done in oh, about a generation. Okay, and uh, let's hope for George Cruz for this one. You know, George is not a perfect candidate. None of these people are, so I'm not going to say anything about that. You know, everyone's, you know, everybody's nice. You know, but I have this saying that nice is rarely the problem. You know, and so for some people it's evil, some people it's selfish. You know, but it, people can be nice to other people and still have some significant integrity problems. Like that's, you know, Commissioner Van Ostenbridge. He's not a complete monster. You know, I mean, he's he he's a he's a competent person. I will say that he knows his stuff. I mean, the board was run generally, I would say, much more smoothly than now. I mean, like it's it's June and Mike Ron still hasn't learned Robert's rules of order. <laughs> you can't say that about uh, Commissioner Van Ossenbridge, but you know, again, selfish, evil, you know, that, that, those, those, those apply sometimes, you know, like with the wetlands and the fact that he just cut off the ability for people to call in and provide comments despite campaigning on increasing transparency. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, Cruz, however, Cruz is... He got his head right after he had his accident, and he's the only one that's been voting for, you know, sensible stuff when it comes to the wet. Uh, the wetlands was one, and the impact fees is another. You know, the county has not been collecting the impact fees that are necessary to fund our infrastructure, and just as of this recording, it was earlier today. Uh, they had the budget workshop, which revealed the fruits of the lack of collecting impact fees. They're cutting the capital improvement plan. So that will be that will please some people, like the 59th Street people, the say 59th Street. Your project is probably going to get pushed back, deferred for a few years, maybe. Which you know, hey, that's great for you. And you know, it's something that's probably going to have to get done at some point in some capacity but you won't see it for a while. And you can thank the fact that they're not collecting millions of bucks and inflation for that. So anyway, 
And then there's the other trolling right in Nathan Meyer. I mean, this scheme is so stupid. It's like Jason Bearden level stupid. I mean, this is like, you didn't have to close this race because sorry, Lindros closed the race already, dingbat. Anyway, but anyway, they have to troll. Trolls are gonna troll. All right, in the school board, you have Heather Felton, Alexander Garner, and Mark Stanek. Mark Stanek has been endorsed by the Republican Liberty Caucus. Heather Felton, uh, the Democrat in this race. I don't know anything about Alexander Garner, but that's who we have for the District 1 school board race. In District 3, there's Charlie Kennedy, who would be returning to the school board if elected. Um, he had previously served, and then he left, and then now he's trying to go back in. Briefly, uh, Jeffrey Carmen had filed to run, but then he changed his mind when Charlie entered the race. I don't know if it was just got something done on a whim, but either way, he's not it. Uh, Jonathan Lynch, don't know who that is, and Perry Ann Parkman, don't know who really who any of these people are. Um, I just, I, the only thing I saw was Charlie said that neither of these people have any experience in school or on the school board. So I don't have to take a look at that, but you know, it's not, not my district. So I'm kind of not invested in that race. So, okay. And then of course we got the clerk of court. She's, she's qualified and will not be on any ballot because she is deemed reelected. Okay. Then the, the hottest race probably in the whole county is the election supervisor. Uh, Scott Farrington, who is the reason why in the last uh, 20 years or so, uh, we, you know, maybe not that long, but yeah, for, for quite a few, for over a decade, he came with uh, Mike Bennett and was his chief of staff and made sure that Manti County elections were clean and successful. But, you know, you have James Satcher here, the so-called pastor that is spreading lies about Mike Bennett just to try to win. That's not a good look, you know, but whatever. Anyway, so when we have another perennial uh, primary closer, Thomas Dell, sham candidate uh, to close the primary so that only Republicans can vote in that primary race. Then we've got the property appraiser with another sham candidate right in, Travis Dale Casper. Darren George, um, who, is, uh, some, who is a neighbor of James Satcher, he had originally filed to run in District 1, and then he changed his mind and went for the property appraiser against Charles Hackney, who is the incumbent. And that will be closed, and these will be on the ballot in August. All right. Sheriff Wells deemed re-elected already. Ken Burton deemed re-elected already. And here's another interesting race. The mayor, Gene Brown, who was the incumbent, versus upstart Bill Sanders. Bill Sanders is a pretty outspoken guy. We'll see how well he does with his chances. Good luck to you, Mr. Sanders. Okay, the Palmetto mayor, Charles Smith, running for mayor versus Daniel West. I don't really know anything about this race. Um, the Holmes Beach Mayor, Mike Roth versus Judy Titsworth. Anna Maria Mayor, Brian Seymour versus Mark Short. And now we come to our 16th Congressional District race. This is, we actually have two primaries here in the Democratic Party and in the Republican Party. I don't know who Trent Miller is, but I've met Jan Schneider and Jan has been running a lot for quite a few cycles, but you know, she's a nice lady and she's, I think she's been ahead of her time actually, but we'll see if, how well she fares. You know, Jan has been able to scare up a good 40% of the vote sometimes and on a shoestring budget, you know, so that's considerable. So we'll see how that goes out. I don't know anything about Mr. Miller, but good luck to both. Happy democracy. Okay, same thing for the Republican race. We have Vern Buchanan and Eddie Spear. Vern is the incumbent. Uh, he's also on the Ways and Means Committee. Uh, he didn't get the chair of Ways and Means, which, you know, that, that was kind of a salt in the wound kind of thing there, but we'll see what happens uh, later on. Eddie Spear is an America First Republican, or so that how he brands himself. 
and we'll see how that works out. You know, was is the energy in Manatee County with America Firsters or is it with the establishment? We will find out in August, won't we? Okay. Eddie Spear has been uh, endorsed by the Republican Liberty Caucus, and he's made frequent appearances at the Manatee Patriots and other uh, smaller local political uh, events like the political eats. So we'll see if that if that bears him any fruit. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. Also deemed reelected, Ed Brodsky, the state attorney, the public defender, Larry Eager, and then we've got the house races, the state house races. These are important because home rule is rapidly being eroded by our governor and the state legislature who are continually grabbing more power. And what's wrong is for the Manti delegation to give any cover to that. But unfortunately, you know, tribal politics is such that they often do go with the wind. So for House District 70, there's Luther Keith Wilkins as a Democrat and Michael Owen. They'll be on the ballot in November. District 71, Adrian De Villiers versus Will Robinson, who's the incumbent. He's been in there for a couple of cycles now. I think if he wins, he'll be close to term limiting himself out. I have to check the term limits for Will Robinson, but hopefully we'll get a lucky and vote out Adrian, I mean, vote out Will Robinson because, you know, Will was one of the people that wanted to put up that stupid parking lot on, on Holmes Beach. And he, he's siding with Kevin Van Ossenbridge on that issue. And he really hasn't been listening to anybody. And if you actually listen to him when he talks about it, I think you could, if you watch that um, Blue Puppet video when he really takes down Robinson, it's quite clear that Robinson is not in our corner when it comes to home rule. You know, he probably has sites somewhere else. I don't know the guy, but it is this is just a classic playbook of well, he has sites for something else, maybe something bigger. And when he moves on from the house, he'll do something else. And don't worry, he he his his gravy train is well stuffed. So let's go, Adrian De Villiers. Let's get somebody who might actually care about home rule here. It's Will Robinson that is part of why. They're doing the island consolidation study and actually the whole delegation, Tommy Gregory, Robinson, all of them, they, they all voted for that. So yeah, you have to give those people the side eye, you know, they, they're not for us. Okay. That's not small government conservatives or as they claim to be. Okay. Anyway, house district 72 is the hot race apparently in the, state house races because it is really crowded here we have lisa miller who will be on the ballot in november as a democrat but then she will face off against the winner of the republican primary william connerly he's a former planning commissioner and he's the developer pick Alyssa gay richard green and rich tatum rich tatum is currently on the school board and that's creating an issue of his, in itself because he resigned under the resign to run laws and now james thatcher is refusing to conduct an, an election to fill his seat so that's a contentious issue there and we'll see what happens but he's in the race for district 72 and that's going to be a pretty interesting primary to watch to see how that turns out. Anyway, so all of this stuff is on the supervisor of an election site. It was votemanatee.com, but, you know, James Satcher is switching over to votemanatee.gov. Let me see if votemanatee.com still works. Mm, yeah, it is. I think what, it, what happened is that their security certificate is with votemanatee.gov. And that's why the .com is coming up as being unsecure. It's not really, but anyway. Okay, so all this information is here. How do you find this? Let me make this a little bit bigger. Make this a little bit bigger. Doo, doo, doo. Okay, so you would go to um, uh, candidate information here, local candidates and committees to find our local candidates, to see everything about all of the local, not the, everybody that is not for the state house and not for the federal. Okay. okay. 
no state level and no federal. But there, those are in the federal and state candidates section. But for the local ones, you can see how much money that they have actually raised. You can see who donated to them. Okay, so there, ooh, Keith Green, it's official, did not qualify. Everybody else is qualified. You see who's withdrawn. Leah Hertz withdrawn. And then all the other ones, um, soil and water, mosquito control, the property appraiser, the school boards, sheriff, I know the state committeeman thing and committee woman, yeah, somebody's going to have to explain that to me. Okay, then the supervisor of elections, tax collector, and then there's a bunch of CDD seats. If you're in these CDDs, you should check them out and make sure you know who these people are, but then most of these people are going to be unopposed anyway, so whatever oh harrison ranch there there's there's something there so there's a there's actually going to be a challenge for harrison ranch Woo! yay democracy all right so yeah take a look here and then you can see everything about these people and where their money is coming from if they're putting in any money this one makes no sense to me why would you put money into the state committee woman race i mean really 20 grand this, this doesn't even pay anything as far as I know. But anyway, but yeah, so, oh, yeah, let me, let me go find the, the, the trolls here. The trolls. So if you're looking to figure out who not to vote for, well, one of the, these, these write-in trolls, because this one here, Nathan, whatever, Nathan Meyer. His email is closedprimaries at gmail.com. Could you advertise that you're a sham candidate anymore? We should actually go ahead and file criminal charges against you because you're obviously a sham candidate. And Okay, so Nathan Meyer has the nerve to actually tell us that he's only in there to close the primary. He's not actually campaigning. Okay, great. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, who's the other one here? Oh, Jeffrey Gray. He too uses closed floor closed florida primary at gmail.com really okay another sham candidate sheriff wells are you looking i hope you should and go get these people and uh they're sham candidates they're obvious sham candidates thanks all right all right um i think that's enough for one night and i don't want to look at james Setter anymore um but anyway yeah great that's the rundown on our local elections and local state elections, not the federal stuff with Trump or anything like that. Uh, we are, we'll, it's gonna be a hot time. Stay informed, watch the individual candidate pages, their Facebook pages and their websites for their events. I mean, you can meet people. Most of the activity is in the Republican party, but you can also sign up with the Manatee Democrats and go meet the Democrats if you're inclined towards the left or curious about the left. You know, not everyone hates Democrats because they're Democrats. Some people are, are quite happy to vote for Diana Shoemaker because she's long been a figure in the community and, you know, she worked for Habitat for She was leading Habitat for Humanity, so she's done good things. She's not a monster, you know. It's time to stop looking at your neighbors as monsters because of their political affiliation. That's just childish for one and really closed-minded for another. I mean, but... I mean, we have to be able to talk to each other. Anyway, I need to stop ranting and it's late at night. So please stay informed. Thanks for listening and take care. Bye-bye.